What do your OBGYN and cardiologist both have in common? They understand hormones and the heart. Today I sit down with Dr. Daniel Ginn and he's going to share the importance of consulting a physician or cardiologist prior to undergoing any large gynecological procedure, especially if you're a young woman. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Dr. Daniel Ginn. Will you tell me what endometriosis is? Sure. So endometriosis, I always start with the definition of the endometrium. That's the lining of the uterus. That's where a pregnancy would be. It's where the lining builds up that is shut off in a period if you don't get pregnant in a given month. Endometriosis as a concept is tissue that is similar but not exactly the same to what grows on the lining of the uterus implanted and growing in other areas of the abdomen and pelvis. So it could be on the ovaries, it could be on the side walls of the abdomen. Those tissues though, just like the lining of the uterus are hormonally responsive. And so estrogen spikes trigger those tissues to proliferate, they swell, they cause inflammation and pain, and also cause scar tissue to the surrounding tissues too. And so that's, by definition, that's what it is. We used to think it was because people had tissue that was coming out of their tubes during their periods, but we've got more recent research that shows that's not really where it comes from. For over a decade, I've been a patient advocate for women in heart disease. During that time, I've met several young women with endometriosis and heart disease. Do you think there's any correlation? So I, in, in general, I would say no. It's definitely not common. There's not a lot of data available on the question at all. The information that's there is really in the context of large meta-analyses where they look at a lot of studies at once and try to draw some conclusions from that. And they've shown that there might be some small to moderate associations between heart disease and, in, and endometriosis. But then it gets to the reason why, and that's what's not so clear. The first question in that is, is it because of the disease itself or is it maybe related to some of the treatments that have been done in the past and that we're still doing that might help with endometriosis? Endometriosis itself is a chronic inflammatory condition. And so any chronic inflammatory event that the body experiences could also have an impact on heart health. It's not one that we see commonly, especially in a younger population. But the degree of involvement for younger patients then gets to the broader question of what impact does the treatment have on your heart health as you get older? So we know that estrogen is incredibly important for heart health overall, but estrogen is the driver of endometriosis. And so in the past, many of the most commonly used treatment modalities have been medications that really sharply downregulated hormone production and even up into including surgeries to recommend removing the ovaries which are producing estrogen far before menopause and we know that if you do that you have an increased risk of heart disease and osteoporosis as you get older and so i think that what we probably are seeing is and a stronger correlation with patient, patients who would have an increased risk of heart disease in the setting of endometriosis, possibly as a result of the treatments that are there, less because of the endometriosis itself. If you have a patient that is experiencing endometriosis, is there something they should do or ask their physician when it comes to their hearts? I don't know that there's a specific question about heart health, but I think it's an awareness of what is the broader question in terms of management for endometriosis and how might that impact my heart health as I get older. And so the thing that they really want to be thinking about, what is your age, your chronological age, and what is that proximity maybe to menopause? So the conversation with someone who's in their late 40s, their 50s, is very different than the conversation with someone who's in their 20s or 30s or early 40s because that's a far far longer distance to menopause and so there are many more years in those cases that we still need natural estrogen to be feeding the body and protecting the heart what should a patient know prior to undergoing any important gynecological procedure I think what I would want patients to know is that there is an association with their heart health and their estrogen levels. And so if they're seeing a doctor who says to them, you're 30 years old, I think what you need to do is remove both of your ovaries. They need to be asking more questions about why and what are we doing to mitigate other symptoms that I have that don't also put me at added risk. So sort of anecdotally, one of the things I tell patients is, I could take out all your organs, I could take out your ovaries, but then if you die of a heart attack at 45, it's hard for me to say that I've helped you. The the balance here is finding a medical therapy that can help deal with the symptoms 
and suppress the spikes of estrogen without taking you from a normal estrogen level to no estrogen for a long period of time. So we have medications that can take you to a very low level of estrogen, but you can only use them for two years. And it's because we have these other risk factors like bone health and heart disease. And so they're not good to be taken for long periods of time. And so instead we have to find an, in, an in intermediate treatment option that's safe for long-term use that doesn't increase that risk as well. So rather than getting you to no estrogen, get you to a lower stable baseline estrogen that doesn't have spikes to stimulate new tissue growth. Thanks for watching Heartquake Media. Make sure you check out our website and social media for more information on heart healthy living. And remember, wellness starts with the heart.